Since moving to Central Florida, the plant struggle has been real, okay? What you're about to hear is a cautionary tale of woe and carnage. It's not for the faint of heart. So if you think you can handle it, stay tuned. Hello and welcome to Peggy's Plants, coming to you from Central Florida. If you're someone who has been following my channel for any length of time, you are aware that when my channel first began, I was coming to you from the Florida, Florida Keys. I was living in Zone 11 and I could pretty much grow any tropical plant, philodendron, orchids, um, bromeliads, you name it. I could grow them outside year round because I lived in a zone 11 so we didn't really get frost or anything like that well seven months ago I packed up my garden as much as I could yeah I pulled up a lot of my plants and orchids that I had mounted on trees I packed up my house plants that were growing indoors and moved to Central Florida I thought that packing up the plants was going to be the hardest thing because I wanted to make sure I pack, I packed them in a way that didn't do damage to the plants and I was mostly concerned about putting them in bins, putting them in this trailer and moving them for five and a half hours in a closed trailer in 90 some degree heat in the South Florida sun. So. Um, that was my biggest concern at that time, but since then I realized that was the easy part. The plants actually traveled quite well. I was impressed with how well they did. Um, yeah, it got hot in the trailer and everything, but none of them seemed to be overly stressed. So everything made it to Central Florida in healthy condition. And so I was able to go ahead and start styling my plants in my home. I was really excited about it because I have a lot more um, bright light, a lot more windows in this house. So I was excited to put my plants out and um, get things organized and looking all pretty. Well, that didn't last very long. The biggest obstacle was acclimating these plants to their new environment. I take full responsibility for some of the things that have happened to some of these plants because I'm trying to set up a house, trying to set up a plant room, trying to decorate with plants, and they haven't been getting a lot of care and attention. Now, this Calathea mosaica I have had for a couple of years now, never had a problem with this plant. I put it in a self-watering pot and it was doing great in the keys. I brought it here, I tried to put it in similar conditions to what it was at the old house, and all of a sudden I'm getting yellow at the edges of the leaves. Now, I don't think that it is a humidity thing, but honestly, I have no clue what is now wrong with this plant. The new growth seems to be okay though. Another plant that has never given me problems is this Carnosa Compacta, this um, Hoya here. I don't know. I'm thinking it's a watering thing, but part of the plant has died off. I have had some pest problems in my plant since moving, but um, I don't think that there's any pest on this plant, but you can clearly see that part of it is dead. I don't know why. So all I'm going to do on this one is I cut off part of the plant. I'm looking at it. I don't see spider mites or anything like that. I'm still going to treat this plant anyway and put a systemic in it, give it a good watering, and I'm hoping that everything's going to be okay. As you can see, most of the plants are doing quite well. I think for the most part, the biggest thing with the plants you see down here are that they are dehydrated. I haven't come up with a watering schedule yet since I've been here, since I've been kind of busy with other things, but I've got to get back on track because 
I have lost some plants and you know anyone who collects plants you know the money in these plants and you don't want them dying off can you believe this ficus though is living for me and doing great as much trouble as I have with them so at least someone's happy my aglionema that I have never had a problem with it's doing okay but some of my snake plants are looking pro like you know they're not very happy which has never happened before um, it's being watered I don't know why this plant is looking like this and it has leaves that are just passing out and I don't know for some reason it just doesn't like this spot and then my philodendron golden goddess is growing like a crazy weed I mean this plant is all over the place and as you can see it's a little droopy right now so I'm just took it over here gave it some water and as you can see the leaves have perked right up and the plant is doing just fine now you may recall seeing a video that I did on my Marble Queen pothos and how big and beautiful it was well, this is all that I have left of that plant. It just started dying like nobody's business. It's finally starting to do better. Yeah, there's some damage there, and that's because I <laughs> actually sucked that leaf up into the vacuum. Don't ask, long story. But anyhow, other than vacuum damage, this plant seems to be doing okay. I actually have it in LECA now um because it was dying off so quickly i didn't know what to do with this plant so i put it in leca and now it's happy now i'm going to take you up to my plant room where things are bad things have gotten pretty bad we're going to start off with this um spider mite ridden el chaco red this plant was totally healthy and happy when I brought it here and I looked at it the other day and there are spider mites all over this plant so I don't want to chop off all the leaves which is normally what I would do in this situation so I just treated it with the spray hopefully everything will be okay this plant yeah what can I say this is my Cebu, Boo, Cebu Blue Pothos that again I used to have a huge hanging basket of this plant and it has slowly died off. I didn't see spider mites or anything on this plant. I don't know what the problem is but yeah this one I wasn't able to save. And on this philodendron yeah, all the bottom leaves just started dying off. Again, I don't know why. I don't see spider mites on here. I don't see anything that seems to be eating any of the leaves. Uh, I don't see any evidence of fungus or anything like that. But again, what I'm going to do is I am going to treat it with a systemic. And in the meantime, I'm also going to spray it down um, with uh, um, insecticidal soap just in case there is something there that I'm missing and then I'll just go ahead and cut off all these dead leaves and hopefully this plant will bounce back and be okay I trimmed off all of the dead and dying leaves about a week ago watered it well gave it a systemic and sprayed it with insecticidal soap and it seems to be doing just fine a week later and this philodendron has just hurt my feelings I'm gonna admit this plant was growing beautifully it's one of those odd plants that you've not heard of but I saw it I liked it I bought it it was growing beautifully for me brought it to the new house it was doing just fine and then I look again and it's just dying so after closer inspection I was able to see some webbing um, on the leaves and things so it has spider mites 
Um, so again, I'm having to treat this plant for spider mites, but it's so far gone that what I decided to do was just go ahead and cut everything off. I cut it down to a stump, I sprayed it with insecticidal soap, treated it with the systemic, and I put it in this plastic bag just to contain everything. And the humidity should do the plant some good as well. And after a week and a half in this bag, there is actually some new growth on this plant, but I also noticed these little insects. Now, they look a little big to be spider mites. I'm not exactly sure what they are, but whatever they are, they're dead. So I'm happy about that. I'm happy about the fact that there's some new growth. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this out of the bag and when I did, I noticed that there's also another little growth point there. You see that? So this plant now has two growth points and it appears to be pest free. So I decided to go ahead and put it in the grow tent and hopefully that will help stimulate some more growth. So on to this Hoya Carii variegata. Yeah, I don't even know what to say about this plant other than the fact that it is pretty dead. <laughs> Obviously, this plant is dead. I don't think that there's really anything I'm going to be able to salvage on this plant. I don't know why it died. Um, yeah, after a week, this is what the plant looked like. So, yeah, this one's a goner. I'm not going to worry about it. It could possibly have been something just as simple as it didn't get enough water. I don't know. I'm thinking it did, but either way, same result. This plant didn't come back to life. It's dead. So moving on to this Ruizii that I purchased at the Aroid Festival. And when I got it, it didn't really have any roots. So the big thing was rooting this plant and it has definitely started rooting. It's got some new growth, but as you can see, it looks a little shriveled up and I haven't been able to get this plant to look any better than this, but at least there's a new growth now. So I know that it's got to have some roots somewhere. Um, yeah, this needs to be cleaned out. I need to clean the algae out of this vessel, but that wouldn't be a cause for the plant to be on the decline um, that's no big deal but I'm just gonna make sure this has enough water in it I'm gonna flush it to, to make sure that there's no salts from um, fertilizers that's causing any kind of issue you see that root there so yeah we have some roots going so I'm just gonna give it some more water and see if that doesn't help out and after a week and a half this plant I don't know. It looks like the leaves are maybe maybe a little flatter than they were, but it still looks really dehydrated. Um, all I can do is hope that it's still developing some healthy roots. The growth point is still growing. Everything still looks like it's moving forward. So I'm not going to worry about this one too much. Now, another Hoya Carnosa Compacta. This one is doing the same thing as the one that I showed you downstairs. This plant was growing outside on my screen room and now it's growing indoors and it has not liked the transition at all. This plant is, yeah, not looking happy, not looking healthy and everything I try, nothing I try has helped. So after a week and a half, this plant, excuse my finger, this plant does not look any better. In fact, it looks considerably worse. Why? I don't know. I've inspected it for pests. I'm going to go ahead and treat it with insecticidal soap, make sure it has a systemic, and hopefully that'll help. Another Hoya on the decline is this Pupacalyx. And... I think this one just is a watering thing, but again, this was one that was growing outdoors as well. And now I have it indoors in my plant room 
and it is not liking it at all. So I think what I may end up doing is just going and moving this one back outdoors because my other pubicalyx that I was growing indoors is doing perfectly well. So I don't know, I'll water it, maybe wait a few days and if it doesn't look like it's getting any happier, I'm gonna put this one outside. And if things couldn't get any worse, yeah, there's this. This, I think, was a Siltipacana? No, I think this may have been an Adansonii that I rooted, but it is so crispy and so shriveled up. Honestly, people, it's beyond recognition. I don't know what this plant is. I don't remember. And needless to say, it didn't make it. It did not like the transition at all and never acclimated to the new house. And up here, I have a, a mammy eye or a mame. It looks like it's doing okay. It's getting a little yellow on that one leaf, but yeah, I'm not going to worry about it. I think that's pretty much it for the plants that were really, really struggling. And hey, it just goes to show, even just a little movement in plants, a little change in their condition can make such um, and a little change in their environments can make such a big difference in the health of the plants. So I'm going to keep trying to acclimate. I'll keep you posted with the good, the bad, and the ugly. Thanks for watching. Take care. Hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.